Hey, this is Nate Story with Bright Agritech, and today we're going to talk about PAR. So there are a lot of videos out there on PAR. You'll also see PPFD, which is photosynthetic photon flux density, which sounds awesome. Something like Star Trek? I don't know. Sounds pretty cool. But really what it's describing is the amount of light that we're delivering to the plants that the plants can actually use. Okay, and that's a really important thing to understand because a lot of people will confuse PAR with, uh, with temperature, with lumens, with lux, with all of the different measurements for light out there. And at the end of the day, what really matters is PAR, okay? All right, so PAR, and I'm gonna erase this here. PAR is the measure of the, the photons that are hit, hitting a plant that the plant can actually use, all right? So in the visible spectrum, this is the light that we can see. It also happens to be a lot of the same light that plants use. Um, you know, it starts somewhere down here around 400 nanometers and in somewhere up here around 700-ish nanometers, okay? Um, this is generally the range of PAR within the visible light spectrum. And um, when I'm talking about light, I'm talking about uh, nanometers here, I'm talking about wavelength, right? We remember that light is kind of, uh, photons are kind of energy and a particle, and they're traveling in these kind of long squiggly lines. Well, these ones down here travel in, uh, these gaps are, it's more like this, right? And the ones up here are much longer, like this, right? A little bit longer. And so, um, you know, these are actually almost half the length of, of the ones on the far end of the spectrum. These ones have a lot of energy. Lots of energy here, not much energy right here. Well, the plants are using um, light within this range, okay, between 400 and 700 nanometers. Now, the, the important thing to remember is that plants are using uh, light just in a certain range. Now, we all remember back to, I think, biology, you know, ninth grade biology or something, where we talk about why plants are green. Plants are green because they're reflecting green light, right? They reflect a lot of green light. Um, and when there are other pigments, anthocyanins, other things in the plant leaves, they reflect sometimes more red light, sometimes they reflect yellow light, sometimes, um, you know, you name it, right? Uh, they kind of get purplish tinges, and that's because there's pigments in the, in the plants. Well, those pigments um, also happen to um, basically uh, oftentimes capture uh, light and, and use it for some photo uh, to, to kind of funnel it into the photosynthetic machinery of the plant. So when we're looking at a plant leaf um, and light is hitting it, um, if something like around 400 nanometers hits this leaf, it's probably, um, you know, some of it might be absorbed, but probably reflected. It's not super, uh, the plant can't use it really, really easily. The absorption isn't really, really high, okay? So the chance that it's gonna hit the leaf and turn into energy, the plant will be able to use it, it's pretty low. Same thing way the heck up here. And what we found, what scientists have found is they kind of research um, absorption rates or the ability of light to hit that uh, leaf and be used by the plant is that there's kind of a peak. Now, um, there is a peak, right? So around 450, and this is not going to be to scale. I'm not even going to try. And 660 nanometers, 440 uh, nanometers, right? We see a peak right here, and then we see a peak up there, something like that. Not to scale, kind of close. Um, so this is where uh, plants are absorbing uh, blue light down here, those where plants are absorbing red light up here. Now in reality, what we're talking about here is a couple different types of, of chlorophyll. We've got chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. They're two different kind of uh, slightly different ways of absorbing energy and, and, and turning it into something the plant can use. Plus we're talking about um, some other pigments in the plant leaves that also are able to capture light and transfer it to uh, photosynthesis. They're called carotenoids. And I'm gonna tell you right now, if you wanna get deeper into this stuff, you should really check out the uh, Upstart University uh, course on lighting because I go into way more detail there. 
I'm not gonna get into a lot of detail here because I don't wanna put you all to sleep. If you um, want to get more details, check out USU and the lighting course there because I go into way more detail there. But what we're really looking at is, you know, chlorophyll A kind of does this number, and then it kind of does this number, and chlorophyll B kind of does this number, and then this number, and then carotenoids are kind of doing this weird thing up here, and then they kind of fade out. Well, what we do is we average all of this out, and we average all of this out, and what we find is that that, that absorption, um, those absorption peaks uh, tend to happen, you know, just like that. Everyone's kind of familiar with this, right? 440 nanometers and um, 660 nanometers. So. Um, when we're talking about PAR, really what we're describing is, even though we're describing kind of everything in this range, because there are like, you know, there, there, there are weird little absorption points kind of uh, along much of this uh, range here, but really where the most work happens, where the most work happens is right here at 440, or around 440, and right here at 660. Now, the big caveat is that um, plants, Plants are all different, right? Plants are like people. Plants are like everything else in the world. And different plants are different. Different species, different types of plants. Plants grown in different places, under different conditions, with different kinds of light. All these things impact absorption rates, right? Uh, but uh, really, uh, for the most part, if we're just gonna speak very generally about things, we're looking at this range. So. Uh, the cool thing is, is we now live in the age of LEDs, right? It used to be that we deliver, um, you know, an HID, uh, let's say a high pressure sodium light, and uh, the light from that, the PAR from that high pressure sodium light would look, you know, like maybe something like this, you know, um, with kind of all these weird peaks. And a lot of energy was being delivered to the plant in areas where the plant couldn't use it very well, right? And that's not actually a high pressure sodium uh, spectrum there. It's just kind of a made up example. But the idea there is that um, now with LEDs, we can select the exact, the exact um, spectrum that we need for our plants, right? We can, we can pick exactly what we need. And that is very, very cool because what it means is that we can deliver energy right here and we can in deliver energy right there. And we can forget about all this other stuff, right? We can forget about everything this way. We can forget about everything that way. And we don't waste any of this energy. So no energy lost here, no energy lost here, no energy lost there. We are only delivering energy in the form that the plants can actually use. Now that's not to say that the plants are gonna absorb all of that, they're gonna, they're gonna hit the plant leaf and they're gonna penetrate and they're gonna hit a chloroplast and actually be used, right? Um, but that is to say that the chances are much higher of this energy being used than this energy in here, right? And so we can deliver exactly what the plant needs. Now this is photosynthetically active radiation. And when we're talking about LEDs, typically what we're talking about is something in this range and something in this range, as opposed to this entire range now. It's pretty cool, pretty cool. We measure uh, PAR in uh, micromoles per square meter per second, okay? So it's this, people are just making fun of me for the big old mess that I make on the whiteboard. Tyler was, Tyler's been mocking me uh, today. So um, I'm gonna try and make less of a mess and eh, it's not gonna work, okay. Micromoles, okay, per square meter per second. So, <coughs> what is that? That's a big number, okay. Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, one millionth of that, um, every square meter, every second, that's how many photons um, we're measuring, right? And I'll tell you right now that when we do this, we're typically looking for PAR in excess of 200 micromoles per square meter per second, okay? 200 plus is kind of where we like to start for almost all of our production. Why? Um, in, in a lot of other places, uh, people will use less, they'll use closer to maybe 100, uh, 150, somewhere in that range. Oftentimes Europe, they prefer uh, lower light levels because electricity is a little more expensive there. Um, but here in the US, electricity is really, really inexpensive, and so it's worth it for us to dump more electricity on it 
do CO2 enrichment, and make sure we're getting really blasting, blasting uh, kind of production rates, as opposed to kind of choking it back and trying to make it more economical just looking at electricity itself, right? The economics shift when we drop the cost of electricity. So uh, we're trying to do around 200 uh, micromoles per square meter per second minimum. And for crops like basil, we'll run in excess of 350 sometimes. So uh, we'll really, really kind of blast our light depending on the crop. Now, the important thing to remember is this, you know, this much light energy delivered in this exact spectrum at 660 and 440 is worth a lot more <coughs> than 200 uh, micromoles delivered kind of across this spectrum, right? That goes without saying. So um, the quality of the light, the quality of uh, the light is something that you really need to be thinking out about. Now it's hard to get that measurement. Um, traditionally with a lot of lights that deliver kind of very broad spectrums. But now that we can use LEDs with very specific spectrums, we get around that because we know exactly what our wavelengths are. And we know exactly what's being delivered to the plant. So when we measure PAR, we're measuring actual usable light. And that is very, very cool. So PAR is, um, I should have written this up at the very beginning, photosynthetically active radiation, photosyn radiation. Okay, and um, again, just to kind of recap here, it's a measurement of light between 400 and 700. On that end, we go out into infrared. On this end, we go down into UV. Um, you know, infrared is not very useful. UV is actually kind of bad. Um, can be useful in some ways. We'll get into UV later. Uh, actually, I get into UV in the lighting course. Forget that. Just go watch the lighting course. Um, you know, so this is really what we're looking at here, 400 to 700. And now with LEDs, we're looking at 440 and 660 or somewhere in that range. Now, you'll see a lot of um, LEDs that will incorporate some more far red. So stuff up closer to uh, 700 nanometers, it's useful in, some, um, in pl some plant development. And you'll see other parts of the spectrum being used. Um, oftentimes that is for a very specific purpose and you have to know your plant biology and you have to know exactly what that's going to do for your plants. Um, but you know, there are a lot of lights that will use a little bit of um, UV. There are plant lights that will use some far red and uh, that's definitely something uh, that I talk about in the lighting course. So I'm going to leave it at that. Hopefully this is fairly um, explicative. Is that even a word? Is that a word, Tyler? No, I'm bad with words, man. <laughs> okay. I don't know whether that's a word or not. I just used it, so now it's a word. Um, hopefully that, that gives you guys a good explanation of what PAR is. Photosynthetically active radiation. It's a measurement of the useful light that we can deliver to plants with lights. And um, if any of this doesn't make sense to you, please get a hold of us. Check out the lighting course on USU. Again, I go into way more detail over there. Um, feel free to leave questions down below. Check out the blog. We're always talking about this stuff on the blog. And uh, thanks so much for watching.